And grace be unto you in peace from God the Father Almighty and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Jesus encourages the church to be a community that nurtures honest dialogue and refuses to be kept silent in the face of behavior that harms others. This passage is really not meant to give us a blanket, three-step process for conflict resolution, yet more to model how to walk alongside and protect those who are being disempowered or made vulnerable, enabling them to speak so that others might hear. Is there anyone here who can say that they do not know the destructiveness of secrets or hushed conversations, those parking lot chats after worship when people refuse or are unable to speak honestly to one another? It may be something that we really don't think about until it is festered into a boil that brings nothing but pain. Small issues become big and big issues become catastrophic. And I, too, am probably as guilty as the next person of having these discussions, sometimes out of frustration with the situation, but more than likely looking for someone to commiserate with in a situation that I might not have the resolution. One solution to this behavior is clear and open communication. But that requires as much listening as it does speaking. Now, I've been involved in conversations that I've come to later know were misunderstood by someone else, or maybe I didn't present my thoughts in the clearest of ways. What we are hearing in today's passage is Jesus' plan for the disciples to overcome conflict in the church. Because, as we know, there's an inevitability that someone is not going to be happy with a particular decision made with the best of intentions. The problem that we encounter, though, is that because of whatever the circumstance, we often find it difficult to have a voice in the conversation, or we just decide that the outcome is not going to change to our liking, and we'd rather keep our frustrations bottled up inside. We would like to think that we would be the first person to admit that we were wrong in a situation. But that also doesn't sit well when we have our own particular facts of whatever the disagreement is set in our heads. One of the more contentious demonstrations I was involved in during my past career involved a lot of passion in regard to the many sides to a difficult story. At one point, several people climbed atop a statue and refused to come down because they felt that their voice and their cause was not being heard. In my line of work, there were several methods by which this situation could have been resolved. But I took the tact of listening to the complaints and desires for what was to come. My course of action for the day was laid out in my mind. It was laid out on paper and provided to all of those who would carry out this plan in the hopes that we could address the issues within a specified timeline for the operation to be completed. As it turns out, I spent the better part of two hours having conversation with the people who sat atop this statue, which is something that I had not planned to do. One of the major sticking points was that these folks did not want their tent of dreams to be confiscated and perhaps destroyed in the process. So I affirmed for them if they came down, they could keep their tent and go on their way without consequence. A little more time went by, but they came down and brought their tent with them. A little extra time of listening went a long way in our efforts to not alienate those with whom we had responsibility to serve, and it was done safely without injury to anyone. Listening is hard. Perhaps that is why the process outlined in our reading involves hearing or 
listening at every step. Four times in the first three verses, Jesus makes references to listening or refusing to listen. The repetition suggests that the call to hear one another, to listen closely to the truth of the other, is a vital component of a community grounded in the ways of Jesus. We often let emotions get in the, in the way of having dialogue necessary to overcome the problem where sometimes we just have to agree to disagree. There's nothing wrong with having your voice. The problem becomes when all we want to hear is our voice and not listen to others who may have valid concerns or other pertinent information. Having these open discussions can help us better understand the issue and more importantly, to love, respect, and understand someone else's position on a particular topic. The root of the issue is empowering those who feel they don't have the voice. <clears throat> this is the message Jesus is trying to convey to his disciples so that they might have a roadmap for harmony in the church to come. Unresolved conflict ought not to happen in a silent corner or behind closed doors where differences in power can overwhelm the weak. But neither should they happen through whispered rumors where the corrosive effect of gossip can pervade our lives. In short, the steps Jesus lays out here are not a mere blueprint so much as a statement of community values and an acknowledgement of both the frailty as well as the other necessity of community understanding. Love requires that we address the inevitable conflicts that will arise among us. We can't continue to sweep them under the rug and allow them to fester because unresolved conflicts can hinder our ability to function as God hopes. But for many people, it's easier to identify the ways that we've been harmed than it is to recognize the ways our actions can harm others, even if unintentionally. Perhaps one of the most difficult truths of this passage is a reminder of the human capacity to cause harm to others, both in the groups in which we participate as well as in our personal actions or our failure to act. The final step that Jesus lays out in this roadmap of conflict resolution is separation, which for us as Christians is not to be taken lightly or even considered 90% of the time, especially in the congregational setting. And I'm a firm believer that having the civil conversation with an acknowledgement by all parties concerned to actively listen and hear all points of view will hopefully lead to resolution. Separation can only lead to further animosity and a deepening misunderstanding of the issue at hand or the wrong that one perceives has been committed against them. This is a particularly different, tr difficult track to take when physical harm has been committed against someone. And I believe that the discord in our country, we are called even more to advocate and protect those who can't do for themselves. We are Jesus' disciples in our church, our community, our nation, and our world. We have a responsibility to be the voice for those who struggle to have their own and we have a duty to resolve our issues politely and with respect to one another. The point of Matthew 18 is not that the church or its leaders possess special authority or insight when dealing with disputes, but that whenever it does exercise authority, it must pay ceaseless attention to the least powerful members of our community. Whenever and whatever we bind or loose, 
the setting of our boundaries. The Christian community is called to defend the interests of the least ones in our midst, as well as to create the space and conditions for forgiveness and reconciliation. We won't always get it right because of our humanity, but we are comforted with the knowledge that Jesus is in our midst and won't abandon us in times of trouble. Jesus promises not to desert his disciples as we face the difficulties ahead of us and practice living more fully into the communities that God calls us into being. God is present wherever two or three are gathered in God's name. The power for his followers to be transformed is available for the asking as promised. Truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. Listen with love in your heart. Make the effort today to seek out someone with whom you may have a dispute, knowing that Jesus is beside you and will guide you in putting that hurt of the past behind. The obligation of Christians is to love one another and so fulfill the heart and goal of the law. Clothes make the person as we put on the Lord Jesus Christ and live today in the light of the future God has in store for us. Amen.